A controversial play about the AIDS crisis opened in London this Thursday. Larry Kramer's The Normal Heart. And in the same week, we've also seen government-sponsored pages of the newspapers about what is now an urgent medical problem. Terence Higgins was the first person to die of AIDS in this country in 1982. And I'm going to be talking to Nick Partridge, administrator of the trust set up in Terence Higgins' memory. Immune deficiency syndrome. It's caused by a virus that affects the body's natural defense system. The virus is most likely to be spread through sexual activity, especially involving intercourse, and through injecting drug users who share needles or other equipment. The virus itself is extremely rare until the mid-1970s when it spread from Central Africa to the United States and Western Europe. And the Terence Higgins Trust was formed to educate the public about the dangers involved and provide help for anybody suffering from AIDS, whether homosexual or not. Well, with me is Nick Partridge, the administrator of the Trust, who's here to discuss the problems associated with this condition, which is still without a vaccine or a cure. Nick, how serious is the threat of AIDS in this country? I mean, how many people may already be infected with the virus? At the moment, we don't know. What we do know is that 305 people are officially um, classified as having AIDS, of whom half have died. Now, that's 305 people too many. And any medical problem which involves the death of people in their prime of life, uh, they're generally young people between 25 and 35, is a serious problem which should affect us all. But, I mean, are there any guesses about how many people are likely to be infected with the virus? 50,000 and more in the country at the moment. And how many of those are likely to be women? At uh, the moment, we don't know. Uh, of those officially classified as having AIDS at the moment, 10 are women. Have any women died? Yes, they have. What's the guess at the likely number of deaths, let's say, in a year's time or two years' time? It's difficult to say. What we do know is that the number of cases seems to double every eight months. So we have got a problem that is going to be with us for a long time and that we've got to take great steps to control now. Well, it's bound to be said, I think, and certainly it is said, that it's casual sex that's precipitated the crisis, especially casual sex among the male homosexual community. Is that fair? No, it's not. Um, as the government campaign made clear this week, uh, AIDS is not a disease that affects only homosexual men. Uh, it's spread through blood and semen. It's spread through particular kinds of sexual activity. So what our job is, is to persuade people that sex is a very wide-ranging thing um, that doesn't solely involve intercourse. Lesbians have always known that. It's up to us to tell people that there's a lot of other things that we can do uh, in our sex lives which are safe and which are, uh, are glorious and wonderful and fun. Um, it's up to us to spread that message so that we uh, save lives through that. But it is the case, I think, isn't it, that at the moment the majority of AIDS cases and AIDS deaths have been among the male homosexual community? Yes, that's true, um, and uh, it, that is the way that the disease has spread so far. But the virus is no respecter of either gender or of sexual orientation. Do you think, though, if it hadn't been for prejudice about male homosexuality, the problem might have been tackled earlier in this country? I think that the government would have been far more prepared to spend money uh, in informing the rest of the public about uh, the virus. I think that the medical profession would have been quicker off the mark in treating uh, patients in a more caring way than they have. So yes, because you're dealing with something which involves a fatal disease, a new disease, and homosexuality, it's a very potent brew, and that has caused problems in the ways we as a society have dealt with what is a public health problem. Well, what changes do we as a society need to make in our approach to sex? Well, I believe that we've got to widen our view of sex. We've been taught for a long time that sex equals intercourse. Now, as I said, lesbians have known that that's not true. We can learn a lot from them. Um, we can learn that uh, there are many things that we can do which are going to be just as much fun uh, as intercourse. And we can also learn to reintroduce and re-eroticize the condom uh, because that stops the spread not only of the virus but of many other sexually transmitted diseases. 
it also um, brings back to straight men the responsibility of her contraception and anything which increases their sense of responsibility about their sex lives, I think is a good thing. So there's a wide area in which we've got to approach a very delicate subject, a very difficult subject that we have a lot of problems in talking about publicly, uh, but we've got to get through to people that there is a deadly virus around now, that it's the responsibility of all of us not to spread that virus, and that there are ways that we can do that. Now, the government advertisement campaign started very gingerly in doing that, and there's a long way to go, but we're in the forefront of doing that in our um, safer sex workshops that we run, in the leaflets that we produce, in the posters that we produce, and in talking on programs like this. I put it to you that five years ago, you wouldn't have had someone talking about gay male sexuality on a program like this. It's important that we take those opportunities and that we persuade people that it's our responsibility to make sure that AIDS doesn't spread because at the moment we haven't got a cure. We can't hold out hope for people. So we've got to take that responsibility on all of our shoulders. Well, I think we have to finish there. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Thank